Since Russia's unprovoked invasion of Ukraine in February, U.S. President Joe Biden and his European counterparts have targeted Russia's oligarchs and their ill-begotten gains with asset seizures and freezes. But the richest oligarch of them all, Vladimir Putin, remains untouched by Western sanctions. He continues to grow his business empire, pulling off a trio of financial services deals in the last month. On April 11, Interos, Putin's investment holding company, reacquired Ross Bank from French firm Societe Générale, which had bought the Russian banking group from Putin over a series of deals between 2006 and 2014. One former Sochan employee told Forbes, it was a fantastic deal for Patanin. Then, Oleg Tinkov, the founder of Tinkov Bank, one of Russia's largest private banks, sold his company to Interos on April 28 for an undisclosed amount after publicly denouncing Russia's invasion of Ukraine. Tinkov told Forbes he was forced by the Kremlin to sell his shares for around 3% of their true value. And earlier this week, Patanin's Interos acquired United Card Services, the Russian arm of U.S. payments firm Global Payments Incorporated. terms were not disclosed. The deal was carried out in the interests of developing the banking business of the Interos Group, according to an Interos press release. It looks like a decision has been made to consolidate some of the assets in financial services not in the hands of state banks, but in the hands of Loyal. Patanin has been, specifically, loyal to Putin since the very beginning of Putin's era. No one familiar with Patanin's rise will be surprised by his recent wins, capitalizing on turmoil as the oligarch's specialty. The 61-year-old financier and metals magnate built his fortune in the chaotic 1990s, first by masterminding the infamous loan for shares scheme, an arrangement that allowed Patanin and a small group of well-heeled businessmen to take control of prized state energy and commodities assets at bargain p. Patanin is among the few Yeltsin era tycoons still in Russia to avoid any significant Western sanctions. Only Canada has penalized him. His company, Nor Nickel, the world's largest producer of refined nickel and palladium, continues to churn out metals for customers everywhere, particularly Europe. It provided 27% of Europe's nickel imports last year, according to natural resources consultancy Wood Mackenzie.